right, folks, we have the one and only Nick Maynard with me today, all the way from the West Coast. <laughs> what up, dude? What's going on? Oh, I'm super glad that we're getting to do this finally. We have uh, Nick has sh should have been one of the success story videos like months ago, and just we just haven't had a chance to do it. So, and you've been very patient, like just patiently waiting for an invite, which I appreciate. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was wondering when I would get it. Yeah, yeah. Now we talked about it. It was just like finally. I think what day did I even talk to you this week? I don't know. It might have been Monday or Sunday. I think it would have been Sunday. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I think it was Sunday. Let, let's do that now because I, I don't plan shit. Like, which is so bad. But I just make it up. Like, <laughs> make it up as I go along. We're gonna do good though. So yeah. for those of you that don't know Nick, know Nick, if you're watching and you're in the Facebook group, you know Nick because he's one of our dedicated admins and moderators. And Nick, thank you for the time that you spend on that. It is sure. I cannot thank you guys enough for doing what you do, and I appreciate you in a big way. And and Nick is in the Facebook group because he started as just somebody who came to the Facebook group sort of looking for help, right? And, right. Uh, and now, like a whole new dude, like uh, we could barely recognize you. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I mean, I was, I was on my way to recovery, but finding the group kind of kick-started. It made me move faster towards recovery. Yeah. So I was, I was kind of on my way, but I was dragging my feet a little bit. You know, we don't like, humans don't like change. And, um, you know, I was so used to living that way that I was just moving really, really slow. And I was preventing myself from getting to where I needed to be to enjoy life again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what, what happened? Like, what was the deal? So since it's a success story, unfortunately, we got to hear the part that sucked so that we know the part that was a success. So what's the yeah. deal? Like, how did you wind up where you were? Well, I, I my first panic attack was when I was 19 years old. Um, and, uh, I was hanging out with a friend of mine, um, smoking some weed and I had a panic attack and I had smoked plenty of weed before. <laughs> and, uh, all of a sudden I had a panic attack, you know, lost my, my, I was drawn up my hands, my tongue yeah, yeah. wasn't working, take me to the hospital, went to the hospital, calmed down, you know, didn't even, wasn't even seen, went into the ER, came out. So that was my first one, um, not to draw out 20 years, but you know, I did, I, I probably had another five to six panic attacks, but in, in 20 years, it never really developed into a disorder, mm -hmm. but uh, there were times where I remember there was a time where I had a, a an allergic reaction and um, I, I ended up having to go to the ER for that. And about two weeks after that, I didn't leave the house because I was, I didn't realize what it was. But that was the yeah. kind of beginning of agoraphobia. And, yep. um, but I ended up getting back to work and everything was fine. And I'd feel anxiety from time, time to time. I knew I had anxiety. I, I knew I could, you know, but I uh, just lived a pretty normal life. In September of uh, 20, 2018, I passed out. Uh, at, a, at a brewery and no, I wasn't drunk. I had uh, one beer and, uh, and I, I had eaten a, a little calzone right. and um, I went, just started feeling lightheaded, went to the bathroom and I was like, Oh, I might pass out. I ended up, I did pass out. I hit my head when I fell and went to the ER. It wasn't from anxiety, um, but it, it was, they, they called it vasovagal. Yeah. Vasovagal response. Yeah. Vasovagal. Yeah. Yeah. And so I uh, got checked out. Everything was fine. But that now my subconscious, now I'm scared. So I, I, at that, that point I stopped going to the gym. It's like, yeah. well, if I, if I go to the gym, I'm going to pass out again. So all of a sudden I just stopped doing certain things that I was doing. Yeah. And then in October we got broken into while we were home. Um, he didn't get into the house, but it was in, in the garage. It was attached to the house. And I ended up finding the guy, um, two well it was about almost two days later and he got arrested and i was there for the whole thing and so that was you know heightened uh yeah, nerves yeah, yeah. and Yo. stress and all that and uh and then in november of 2018 uh that actually thanksgiving we found out that my grandmother uh had stage four cancer and she was going to pass away because she was 87 years old and said i'm not going to do any type of treatments or anything i've, I've lived a long life she was like my rock. She was like a second mother to me. I lived with her, you know, in my teenage years, um, which were a little troubled because my parents got divorced and all that stuff. Um, so that affected me. The next day we went to Costco on Black Friday 
and had to go take some chairs back because we had Thanksgiving in my house. So we rented some chairs, took them back to the place, and then we headed to Costco, my wife and I, and we had to get gas. I started to feel anxious right when we were pulling off of the uh, the exit. Mm-hmm. So we, I went, got the uh, filled up gas, and I, I told my wife, I said, man, I'm, I'm feeling anxious. And she's heard me say that before, and she's like, well, why? And I was like, I have no idea. And so I tried to push through it, went into Costco, and obviously I'm not breathing. I, you know, I probably pulled my breath, hyper, yeah. whatever. I, I don't know what I was doing wrong. I started feeling like I was going to pass out again. So I yeah. laid, laid right in the middle of Costco on Black Friday on the floor for like nice. 10 minutes with people walking by me. You need, need us to call somebody? <laughs> uh, no, it's just a panic attack. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> where is the video when we? <laughs> right right yeah i shouldn't have told my wife to record <laughs> so good anyway so what happens so i left i when i was finally able to get up i she said well do you want to shop i said no i want to go home so i ran to my safe space and went back home and laid in bed um and i had a trip a work trip coming up on the 12th or 9th 9th of december and i started thinking about that immediately like, oh no, what am what's gonna happen? I'm gonna have anxiety, I'm gonna do this. Well, I ended up going on the on the trip and I was fine the first day. The next day I woke up. I went to the office, was there eight hours, went back to my hotel, had some anxiety, woke up the next morning, and I was all of a sudden an agoraphobia. I, I, you know, agoraphobic. I couldn't leave my hotel room. Yeah. And um so I was I stayed in my hotel room the whole day. My dad asked me to come up for dinner. I said no. They came down, brought me dinner, hung out with me in my hotel room. The next day, went out with my dad, like nothing, had anxiety, had a few beers, started feeling normal. Okay. Like, oh, wow. I'm fine, you know, because I mean, obviously the alcohol has the same effect that like a benzo would. You right, know? right. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a sedative. Right. So um, I woke up that that evening and th- the next day I had to fly back. And I mean, just riddled with anxiety, panic. And I had to be on a flight in like four hours, couldn't go back to sleep, had to go to the airport. I mean, I was literally like shaking, yeah. you know? And anyway, got on the plane, got in my car, uh, drove back home. Once I started almost to get home, I started feeling better again. I was like, what the hell's going on here? So fast forward to January 4th, my wife's birthday, uh, 2019, I, I woke up with a panic attack and that, um, that was it. That was it. As soon as I woke up with that panic attack, I'm like, I'm not even safe. Sleep doesn't even call me down anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's when it, it turned in. It started spiraling, spiraling into agoraphobia. And I would only leave when I had to, which was either there was a work function that I did yeah. um, that, that I afterwards I had a panic attack. And, um, but I stood up and talked in front of people with this disorder. And I'd been at home for three weeks and uh, they, they had no idea. You know, but inside I was screaming, you know, I was, so it was just, um, that was, it was, it was, that was a really tough time. I was in the house. I mean, like I said, I left a few times when I had to, and um, I ended up having multiple panic attacks a day, anxiety, mostly staying in bed. There was about a two and a half week period. I didn't even leave my room. I felt like I couldn't go to the fridge and fill up my bottle of water i i couldn't even hold my bottle of water i'd have to have my wife get it for me i lost 30 pounds in like a month yeah um, eating like soup i didn't have an appetite i couldn't even watch anything other than like repeats of friends if that makes right. any sense no, it actually does like that was okay you could do that yeah uh, but yeah. i couldn't watch anything new because anything new would you know make me think or make you know like anything like a thriller or something that you know, got my mind thinking, I would immediately start thinking about panic and anxiety. And it was just horrible. So um, yeah, for, for months and months, then I found uh, the anxious truth. And uh, I, I, I had started therapy, I, I'd, you know, talked to a psychologist, he did not specialize in CBT. So he wasn't the best. But I had found an online therapist while I was waiting to see uh, a psychologist. And um, I started talking with her and just kind of getting things off my chest helped a little bit and she had a little knowledge in cbt and so she helped me with that started reading uh, again claire weeks i had written uh, or um, read claire weeks 
like years before when I had that real bad, when I was um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just like, just like you, when just I just like me, right. Reaction. We have similar stories. Yeah. Yeah. And I just forgot all about it. So I started reading it again, read a couple of other books that weren't great, you know, um, but uh, went back to the Claire weeks and then found your podcast and I found the group and yeah. that was it. I just started feeling better. Um, but it wasn't just, Oh, I, I, I'm listening to Drew's voice and his podcast. And all of a sudden I feel better. No, I had to do the work, just like you say, day in, day out, every day, made a plan, kept a diary, what I did today, um, exposures, you know, and I just would, I mean, I couldn't even drive to the corner down here. I mean, not even a quarter mile, I'd start having a panic attack. Yeah. And so I started picking up the kids from school. I started doing little errands. Waiting in line was extremely hard for me. So I started small at like convenience stores and then got bigger and bigger. Um, and then my biggest exposure, some people saw me, um, was when I, uh, I drove to LA to, to meet with Jay. And yeah, yeah. that was, that was a, that was a huge exposure for me. I remember, um, you know, I kind of asking for support from, uh, the admin group right. before I left, cause I was having major anticipatory anxiety about going. And so it delayed me for probably about an hour, but I pushed through and, and did it. And when I did it, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I had learned so much at that point that I knew, you know, how not to react, yeah. you know, and, and spiral out of control and make it worse. Um, it's, you know, and, and that, that really helped me on that trip. That was, um, that was a really long ride. That was a good four and a half, five hour ride, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I drove to San Diego, which is right. See dad after that, right? Yeah. And then I, and then when I left San Diego, I drove straight home. I didn't stop. That was six yeah. and a half hours. And I remember yeah. you, you posted when you got back home about how you just drove straight through and like had the music on. And I think that's that thing where like you, and I know that you worked hard, man. Like you were doing the shit every day. There's no doubt about that. But until you have to do that last big thing, that seems so like, oh my God, remember when I couldn't get out of bed? Like, it's right. a little bit like, oh, am I going to be able to do this? But then, you, you know, uh, you did such a great right. job with that. It was great. It was great to see. Yeah. It, it ended up being, um, I was really happy that I, and thankful that I made the trip. Um, there was times where I didn't want to make the trip. And obviously, um, there was a lot going on in the world at the time, not as bad as it got. But I was, yeah. you know, obviously I had concerns about that going into a tourist area. Right. And Jay wanted to show me everywhere. You know, he's, he lives in L.A. <laughs> so you go to L.A., Jay is the man to see. Yeah, he'll, yeah. He'll, he'll take you everywhere. He knows all the history. He's been there forever. And uh, it, it, it just made it a really great trip. I'd never seen uh, L.A. in that in that way, like hanging out with a local like that. Yeah, um, yeah, it, yeah. It was, so it turned out to be a really good trip. And both of us still had anxiety, and we talked about it. And we – continued on with our day we didn't say oh we take me back to the hotel and you go home and you know yeah we just kept doing what we were gonna do some of the coolest pictures i've ever gotten via text were the pictures you guys sent me when you're hanging out in la that was like the greatest thing um just for those of you who are watching or listening who don't know jay is also one of the admins of the facebook group so you know we all become friends and it was great to see you guys doing that together let's talk a little bit about like you did the hard work. So you knew the nuts and bolts. You went through it. You did it. What was probably, did you have a thing that was finally the, the breaking point where you were like, uh, no more of this. I, I got it. I have to change something now. Was there a moment? Some people have a moment. Some people don't. Some people just sort of slowly turn around and start to move into recovery. Did, did you yeah. have a moment? There, yeah, there was, there was, there was a few. Um, it, was, it probably lasted weeks, actually, because when I was in my room, um, but I, you know, I have a family, I have a wife and three children and yeah. she was doing everything. My wife was my safe person. She was doing all the chores, taking care of the kids doing and that to me, I wasn't contributing to the family. Yeah. And so it made, it made me feel absolutely horrible. Um, so there was probably, you know, some depression there, there was, um, as well, but it was, you know, that came after, of course, that came after the anxiety um, and, yeah. you know, what, what it turned me into. And I'm like, I can't, I just can't live like this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worthless to my family, you know, is what I was thinking. And uh, yeah. when I, that was pretty much my rock bottom. When I thought about all of that, I said, you know, I got to get, 
I got to get out of this somehow. I got, I got to, I got to figure this out. I had every single test done. I thought there was something wrong, you know, something wrong with my head, my heart, my lungs, something blood test. I was going to the, you know, when I remember one, one time my wife took me to the ER cause I was having another panic attack and it was a bad one and she's driving me to the ER. And I remember thinking, I didn't tell her, but I was thinking in my head, man, I really hope something is wrong with me. Cause he Isn't had that answer. crazy. No, no, and you no, know, he, a lot of people think that. Like, if there's something physically wrong, I can either die or and get it over with, or like they can fix me. You know, right? It's hard when it's a mystery and you don't know what it is. Or you, right, you know, and that. So yeah, I just I wanted an answer as to what you know, and but there there wasn't one because it was anxiety, which yeah. is not harmful. It just sucks. <laughs> It does suck. But I mean, so I, I kind of get that, that thing that says like, and it's so funny knowing you now, like, you know, the, the way I know you and as a friend that like, I, the, the thought of you being useless to your family, I know how important that is to you. Like your family is super important right. to you and you're, you're very vocal about that. And I, I, I love that. Um, it's crazy how that disorder can take all of that away temporarily, but right. you know, and put you in a space where you're just not even, barely the same person, but you were always in there. You just had to find him again and you did. So, right. Yeah. And the thing that blows me away too is uh, I guess it was around January. I don't know when it was, but in the midst of all that going from like, I'm stuck in my, my bedroom for two weeks to like, I'm driving to LA and hanging out with my friend. Like you, you were actually given an award for the, for the company you work at. And you know, you produced so much last year. So in the midst of recovering from this raging anxiety disorder, you're like kicking ass at your job. It says a lot about the type of person you are, I think. So do you think you were better equipped because of your personality or maybe, you know, some of us are just built a little bit more to go into that difficult space than others are. Do you think you were one I of mean, those people? That, yeah, I do. Um, definitely, because I knew that I still, I, I wouldn't do, you know, the chores or go get my water or anything, but I would still have a laptop and my phone and, Luckily, I'm, that's what my job is. I can, I work from home. Yeah. So I was still able, but I mean, I remember talking to these clients uh, in Florida and they had just moved there from California. They were in a hotel and her husband had health problems. You know, Sirius was going to go into surgery and they wanted to buy a house and I couldn't help them. Um, they, they, you know, bad credit, no income, stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember talking, I, I just, I felt so bad, but I was in the midst, this is like February. Right. So I was in the midst of the, like my worst anxiety ever. And I remember just like, my whole body was just numb, buzzing. I felt like I was just going to fall over. And I still, I stuck on the phone with her for an hour, uh, just because I, I felt really bad. And I told her, you know, this is how you can do it, this and that. Um, so I, even when I felt at my worst, I was still able to work and then when i started working and in, in, in on my recovery obviously it didn't happen overnight but I, I i dove further and further that was part of my recovery hey make this call do this thing you, so, you know so not just in my personal life but my work life too yeah you know i would go i would go to the office i would do you know things that i didn't i didn't feel like doing because of anxiety and um it it ended up yeah, being my best year ever. And I had no idea until I got my award because I wasn't looking at the numbers or anything. <laughs> All of a sudden I got this award and I'm like, what? what? <laughs> How the hell did that happen? That's so cool. Right. Sometimes you have that one thing to hang on to, like well, I can hang on to my work and I can keep doing that, which is, you know, sometimes helps, gives you a place to anchor onto a little bit while you're doing the work. But um, right. what, what was the biggest, where are we, 22 minutes? What was the biggest I mean, did you have a biggest obstacle, a thing that was the stickiest to get past, the hardest to get past? Can you think of one? Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was Costco. Really? Well, back to the scene of the crime laying there on Black Friday. Sure. That's that thing where we do not want to repeat negative experiences. Of course, yeah. nobody does. Yeah. Costco and, and then driving. The The driving. Yeah, it was Costco and driving. Those were the two two things that were the biggest obstacles for me. Yeah, yeah. I, we have very similar stories, I think, you and I. We had some of the same challenges and the timeline and the – I read Claire Weeks and then freaking just forgot it. Like, right. what's, wrong, what's wrong with us? <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I think it's great. But so now let's look back. You did the work. You came through it. You had a bad year, but it ended up really great. And, you know, what did you learn? Are, are you better off now? 
would you, are you one of those people that would say like that really sucked, but I can be thankful because I learned X, Y, Z. Yeah, I'm better. I'm better now than I, than I have been since I was 19. Like I said, I was, I still dealt with anxiety. I still dealt with certain, you know, thinking back to different things that happened throughout the last 22 years. Yeah. Um, there were certain instances where I would retreat, where I would, and I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what it was. I just knew I didn't feel right. Right. Um, now I know what it is. So having that knowledge and knowing, you know, how to react or, or not react, you know, floppy fish or float yeah, or yeah. whatever you want to say. Right, doll. Um, yeah. I mean, I can do that. You know, I can do that now while I'm exercising, while I'm walking, while I'm in a meeting, while I'm, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's just normal now. It's like second nature, but it took a lot of practice. You know, it, it didn't, it di didn't happen overnight. And I know that folks want, want that magic cure, that magic pill, or yeah. the ma there is none. There is none. There's not a magic pill. There's not a SSRI. There's not a benzo. There's not a herb and nothing. Yeah. You have to do, you have to do the work because in the end, you know, all you have is you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. And we always say like, you know, we're the only ones that can fix ourselves. I mean, you can get support and encouragement and all that stuff, but in the end we have to do the work ourselves. So right. I think in the interest of like encouraging somebody who is watching, who is maybe in a bad spot still like those things you said. So right now you could be in a meeting, you could be at the gym, you could be driving like panic can hit and you could just do the non-reactive ragdoll thing. Right. That at one point had to feel impossible. I'm guessing like I, that's not a, how could that be a thing? That can't be real, but yet here we're doing it now. Right. I'm guessing it just, it takes, a, it, yeah, it was not easy. Uh, it takes a lot of courage, you know, cause the, your reaction is you want to get help from somebody, some, somebody help call 911 or you know, right, right. Save whatever. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Save me. And you know, you can't, uh, so it's, it, nothing can save you from that except for you. So the quicker that you can te teach your, su your subconscious yeah. that this doesn't scare me, you know, um, right. which it does, you know, but then it's, you know, once you get used to it, you know, and that just takes courage. Yeah. So it's, Learn. that's why I tell people in the group, a lot of, you know, you have to have patience and courage and determination. Those are really like the three biggest things it is i think sometimes courage is the biggest sticking point and i understand that like oh, a lot yeah. of people feel like they're not you know oh, i just don't have courage like no everybody does you just have to find it like you know and, and learn to display it but you did a great right. job you did like a textbook example of it man i'm really super proud of you so thanks all, all you know, thanks for the podcast and thanks for the book congratulations on that by the way I know today's actually book release day and I'm like, oh, I guess I should do a podcast today. So I'm super happy that I get to talk to you today. Should, should have yeah, done it long ago. But thank awesome. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's a lot of fun. So you guys are all so like crazy supportive and I appreciate all you guys. So I guess we'll wrap it up because I try and keep it under 30 minutes. This way people don't get too sure. bored, but dude, I appreciate you coming by and we'll do this. One of these again, we'll have to do like dual fireside chats one day dual fireside yeah that's yeah good. <laughs> i think that that's what the public needs to see so nick in the group has done a couple of really great videos that i love that he calls fireside chats with nick including the title screen like i love it <laughs> so i, mean, I, I was sitting in my, my fire pit the other night and i'm like yeah i'm like oh, i should fire up the, i'm like no i can't do a, a video by the fire like that's copyright infringement practically <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah oh TM. man yeah right tm anyway dude all right thanks i appreciate you coming by and uh if you guys are in the group you want to ask nick questions i'm sure We'll, we'll answer them whatever it is we'll put the video up in the group sure. this will be on youtube and what else am i supposed to say before we sign out i'm supposed to ask you if you're listening to the audio to rate and review on on itunes and it's book release day so go to the anxious truth.com slash recovery guide and check out the book buy the book it's a good book it'll help you anyway um all right guys thanks i appreciate it and uh, we'll see you in the next one now i have, to have that awkward moment where we stop recording and like sit still in a freeze frame all right let me kill it see you guys <laughs>